things. Right. So how do you how do you relate some of these stuff to the pastors that wouldn't mind wherever the money comes from, even if it's fraudulent money, even if it's stolen money and all that? You know, because I really I really feel bad about some of those. Yeah, you know, the, the challenge, uh, James Allen put it this way, that the oppressor and the oppressed are partners together in oppression. Mm -hmm. If there's no oppressed, there cannot be an oppressor. Okay. It takes people available to be oppressed for there to be an oppressor. They are both suffering. The oppressed are suffering and they are seeing the oppressor as their solution. <laughs> so the oppressor is feeding something inside of them. So they are comfortable with the oppressor. The oppressor also is suffering. He cannot control himself. There's something inside of him that is that, that being oppressing other people is feeding. Uh -huh. Right? So both of them are partners in oppression. They are both equally guilty and equally wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? And any of the two can decide to break the circle of oppression. Yeah. Because every other person that goes to those churches have everything it takes to go and read the Bible themselves. They have everything it takes to ask God directly. God, is this the way you want me to call it? We don't have they the choose time. not to. We don't have the time. Everybody has a call 24 hours in a the day. They choose not to have the time. They do not see that priority. That's true. Right. So uh, both the pastor and, the, and those that are misled are guilty. Before God, they are partners. Partners in crime. God will not hold one more guilty than the other. Mm -hmm. Because we're each responsible, we're each human being. We're each answerable to God. There's no excuse before the judgment show. There's no, oh, it was my choice that made me do it. Oh, it was my pastor. Oh, it was because of this. Before the judgment show, you decided to. Yeah, I, I can't remember one of the stuff I read lately. The man said um, the reason why he pregnanted his daughter was the devil that led him. And I'm kind of, when are we going to learn that devil does not exist? We actually, the instrument that convert ourselves to be usable and at the end yes. of the end of calling out something that either does not exist or is just a mechanism by which we kind of uh, exhibit our true selves. Yes. Yes, I mean, it's not true that it's not the devil because he, he was doing it not once, not twice, not mm. twice. You know, the devil will tell him to go and do it. Yes, so he's only now calling the devil because he has been caught. If he's not caught, he will continue doing it. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be the devil. Maybe the devil might have tempted you one time, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, but not all the time you're doing it. Now, when you are caught, he now says the devil. No, we need to we need to stop calling devil. I I know why I'm saying it. I'm not saying that devil doesn't exist in absolute sense. What I'm saying is we do things because we want to do it. It has nothing to do with devil. Absolutely. Absolutely. The way God sees it, every action you take is something you chose to do. Exactly. That's why God will judge you without any excuse. Before that's God, that, whatsoever you have done, you have chosen to do. That, that's what happens in the yeah. organizations where we, have, we work, where they talk about uh, accountability, responsibility and accountability. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, to continue here, it says, um, uh, so she, she continues in the book, all right? It's, it's, uh, it says that it's so important to believe that your victory you know everything that you get your light like i said people can find their light in your light i mean when you succeed that someone for example from your village that young boy from your village now sees that it's possible for someone from my village to succeed when you succeed in your family that young boy your family says, ah you mean our family is not cost if uncle chidi can succeed me too i can succeed right people find their victory they find their light in our light. 
So like we typically would say, no obedience is permanent. Mm. Every obedience affects another life. In the same way, no disobedience is, is permanent. Every disobedience is affecting another life. Right? When you see a pastor or the person you're talking about did that crime, someone has just lost faith. You mean it's not possible to hold myself? <laughs> someone just lost faith. When someone has a victory, someone just gained faith. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, none of us is, lives in isolation. Everything we do is affecting someone that's looking up to us who we might yeah. never meet. That's true. Yes, true. Absolutely right. So therefore, if for no other reason, let's live our life because of that one person somewhere who's looking up to us and their destiny is, 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 is affected and dependent on our own destiny. Mm-hmm. You know? And, um, and I took this one off uh, another, another write-up. You know, just talks about uh, the need to shine our light. Mm-hmm. The you know, to the goodness and glory of God as we shine our light. Let us God to continue to show us how best to shine so we could be beacon of His life changing. Oh, I mean, well, when it should be, and the hope is light, right? It, it's just like me, I went to depression this last time. But one of my aburos, one of the, my mentees said, because I could go through it and come back to life. He is confident that if anything like that ever happens to him, he will also come back to life. Amen. You know? Mm-hmm. Because people are looking at you. People are they're taking their, their cue for life from you. You know? So that gives me strength that even if this ever happens to me, if this my mentor I'm looking up to is able to come through it, then I too can come through it. You know? That, mm-hmm. That's the beauty of, of, of shedding our light. You know, you know what you're saying is um, it, it takes it takes strength to do what you do. You mentioned when you are depressed, when you are, you know, a lot of people don't share this. And I can tell you, we do some certain things, even when we made mistakes. There's a whole lot to learn from this company we are working for. It may not be perfect, but I tell you, it's especially within the region where you and I operate, where there's a whole lot of issues, but I mean, generally there is. So in a, one of our pastors in our church in Nigeria, he got employed by Central Bank. Very nice job, managerial position, you know, mm. through the, you know, what is following the stuff in terms of payment and all that, you know, getting a manager's job in Central Bank. Mm. He was so overwhelmed, he wanted to buy a car, buy a new car and all that. He, you know, when he went to where, this is what we heard, you know, where he's supposed to make a, what do you call it again? You know, like a reference letter. He went to the uh-huh. center reference letter and wrote a letter, you know, and sent, you know. Mm. Those people verified the stuff and it wasn't signed by the people that are supposed to sign it. Uh-huh. Plus, he just got it. You know how plane just take off and hit ground. And that yeah. was it. And what I expect is when you have this kind of issue, you know, you have younger ones there, you need to come yeah. out and look. I made yeah. this mistake. Is it yes. not either, either is a known mistake I made or yeah. is one I didn't know. But I want you guys to know that whenever you're doing this stuff, yeah. never do it this, way. this is the right way. So that's what I'm saying that I really like, you know, the way you open your mouth and you say it. The same way Ashley shared his own experience. The same way yeah. when Guy Bolaren shared his experience when he just came back and wanted to help somebody and ended up in the hands yeah. of all these guys. So people will learn because, yes. and I tell you, the best experience or the lessons learned is the experience of others because there's some experience that you may get and you will never come back. Absolutely. For instance, they will tell you how to identify one chance because some people have entered one chance and never came back alive because then we are pushed to the vehicle, moving at the better yes. speed. So... Yes. Anyway, thanks for yeah. mentioning yeah. my pleasure. pleasure. You know, I, I may also mention the fact that, you know, uh, being rich is all about being able to impact other people's lives. It's not about 
counting how much you have in the bank. What you have in the bank is useless if you are not touching lives, you know? And Jesus Christ also said this. He said, hey, with your mon money in this life, you know, make friends unto yourself so that they will, they will be available to you in eternity, mm -hmm. right? Money in this life is not about how much you have in your bank account. It's about making a difference to other people's life. It's how much impact you can make. It's not how much you have in your bank account. Yeah, that, the impact really matters so much, you know. Yeah. I, uh, I had a discussion with a guy, you know, some of, some of us, myself, another guy in our team, another guy from production. Mm. So was not relating an experience, something that happened before him. He was working in Shell before he came to our company. Yeah. So the father, the father, his father was late, mm. or he, was a, he worked in Shell. And yep. this other guy as well, the father may still be alive, but was also an S shell man. So maybe, when they came for their interview and all that, when he mentioned his name, he said, are you a son to this man? He said, yes. Wow, how is he? He said, the man is dead. The guy kind of cried. That was a good man. You know, the other guy, who are you? He mentioned his name. He said, your father? Really? <laughs> huh. In fact, dear, they told the guy about his father. And so unfortunately, we can't, we wouldn't want to have that kind of lineage. Oh, yeah. And they didn't take him. So, Absolutely. you know, when you look at what the Bible says about, you know, whether it's wealth or whether it's cause or it leaves, I know most times if you believe it, it works for you. If you don't believe it, that's my own way. It doesn't work. Yeah. But in some sense, in Africa, especially, it works. Yeah. That was how that guy, what the father, the way he treated both contractors and employees, you know, mm. reports. Yeah. I mean, I saw it, I saw a bit of it in Chevron. I heard about some. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. It, most yeah, times, there are people uh, that are still working against them. Uh, there's, yeah. someone's, there's someone's son in the system that has not been regularized just because of what his father did. Anyway. This life is, is not about what you get, like this thing says. It's about the life you impart. Yes. You're a billionaire by imparting billions of lives, not having millions. Uh, yes. Look at this company called Amazon. If you ask me today, I'll tell you that Amazon is one of the best companies. This guy is dashing people money. He's giving people free money. What do Absolutely. I mean by that? You open up, you go into Amazon Logistics. They'll provide you virtually everything you need. You yeah. know, they start you up to... To, to stand and run, not to fail. Yeah. So how many companies do that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are several several ways in which they, they do that. And it's all about giving back, you know, and, and the law of sowing and reaping, it's always true. It never, it never fades. It never goes all, you know, uh, it's, it's what you give, you get back, you know. It's, uh, so the, the way to life, the way to growth, the way to riches, the way to increase is the way of, of giving, the way of generosity. Mm -hmm. It's always been, it is, and will ever be. That's just the way God God rules, you know. Uh, it's not about chasing after money. It's not about chasing after happiness. You know, <laughs> it, it's just about making it happen for other people. You know? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's like you make it happen for other people, then God makes it happen for you. No, I believe, I believe that God has a good plan for us. And um, if not for our greed and all that, that is what is keeping my country, the country I, I, I take as number one, keeping it down because, because of greed, because of it's, you know, selfishness, ethnicity, religiosity, but all of us tied up with greed. So, but do you know, people think that a certain set of people that they are retaining power is because they are strong. No, it's fear that drive them. If you don't Absolutely. have fear, look at what they say about love. When you love mm -hmm. something, you set it free. Absolutely. And the only time you know that it's actually yours is when it comes back. Absolutely. So if you know you're strong, you keep your hands open and see how things will go. But in as much as you are afraid, that's why you hold it both with your teeth, leg, and hands and never to allow it to go. But um, I pray, I pray we'll practice what we preach. <laughs> Abi, amen, oh, amen. But that's that's the only way we, we, we get to eat of the fruit of our labor, you know. But, uh, God is not mocked, the Bible says. Whatsoever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. Well, that's you what know? 
Life will only respond to you the way you respond to life. Yeah, so there are no two ways around it. It has nothing to do with making noise. It has nothing to do with fasting. It has everything to do with sowing and reaping. You know, that, that some people think it's by making noise, but it's not. <laughs> it, they're simple principles, you know, that, that work. You know, so when you tap into those principles, then you don't have to do manual labor. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's true. Yeah. Impact life. That's good. So, so that's the last slide on that. The triple is a person who positively impact the big young lives. And talking about this billionaire, it's not actually in monetary terms. Absolutely. Absolutely. Monetary terms. There's the other supposed billionaire that died in Lagos. He had money, but he didn't have people. They couldn't get him a bed. That's yeah. how he died. But he yeah. has a, was a billionaire. He had a lot of Rolls Royce, but they yeah. couldn't get him a bed. That's how he died. I mean, your money is useless. What you need is people. People are your riches. So there is this man that died some time ago. I don't know whether when I was in secondary school, I grew up knowing that the man has a hotel and all that. So when this guy passed away, they, they were to bury him. Then, anyway, when he was alive, he was known to be quarreling with his community, goes to court with the community and all that. So when he died now, they've dug, you know, usually it's the community that will, the youth will not dig the grave and all that. So when they dug the stuff out, well, the elders, some of them, they came and they're like, because the man is big and tall and huge, you can understand. The others look at the, the grave and say, no, 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 this thing is too small. They should widen it. Everybody was like, this thing went and out. This, this, they said, no, they should wide. They widen it, go left. They say, no, they right as well. The thing was kind of bogus now, you know, just done with yeah. it. So one of the others said now that the reason why they wanted it to be expanded is so that the guy's house and his property can have a side where they could be buried with him as well. <laughs> You know, since that was what he held so much, yeah. and then so yeah, let him go with his uh, let him die with it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's the same thing we say about some people that just left Chevron, right? I mean, they lead their life as if they would never leave, <laughs> and it was more like, why did why did you carry Chevron with you to retirement? You know, yeah. uh, the, the wisdom yeah. is knowing that. Life has a terminal date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't know that, then you don't have wisdom. That's why the Bible says, "Teach us to number our days, that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom." Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, everything has terminal dates. Whether it's your work at a, a place of employment, yeah, uh, everything. You know, uh, 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 Heraclitus tells us that everything will change except change itself. Except change itself. Yeah. You know, so, so that gives us wisdom. So that means that whatever, whatever we're doing, let's make the best of it because mm. for a season. Yeah, so, and thank you very much. I think that was wow. really enriching. And, um, you know, I, yeah. tried to, I tried to get the, the verse I couldn't remember uh, what you said. As a man is led the continents, uh, sharpen the continents of the bread. In what is it, Proverbs 19? Uh, what's it? Uh, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll search it for you. I'll get it for you. I'll, I'll send you the video. I, I used to, I used to, I used to have that verse, you know. Yeah. But I don't know why. Yeah. I'm losing that track. I need to, I need to get as a, it. As a man looked upon the water, so does he. Uh, a man sharpened or oh, the continent, the right continent, continent. Continent. yes, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. I'll, I'll get mm -hmm. you the exact verse, I'll send you over. Yeah, something like that. Right. Thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. All right, we'll catch up later then. I'll send you the video once I have it. Okay, so thanks. All right. God bless. We'll talk more later. Yeah, thank you. All right, take care. Yeah.